Welcome to my lecture online. In this example, we're trying to find out if the two lines represented by the three parametric equations each intersect one another. In other words, is there some point in space where both lines cross one another at that exact point? Well, the way to do that is as follows. Notice that if t is equal to zero, the x, y, z of line one does not match the x, y, and z for line two. But is there a possibility that if t for line one has some particular value and t for line two has a different value, that at that point they will cross one another at that particular point? And if there's such a point, what we can do is we can plug in a variable t1 for t in this line and t2 for t in this line and then see if the three equations match one another. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this t1 and we're going to call this t2 and we're going to find the values for t1 and t2 in such a way that x, y, and z for line 1 are equal to x, y, and z for line 2. Which requires that if this is true, that 2, and I'll write the equations over here, that requires that 2 plus t1 must equal 2 plus t2. So this alone necessitates that t1 must equal t2. The next condition is that 2 plus 3t1 must equal 3 plus 4t2 and that 3 plus t1 must equal 4 plus 2t2. If all three conditions are correct, then the two lines will cross one another. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two equations right here and solve them simultaneously for t1 and t2 because there we have two equations and two unknowns. So what we can do here is we can solve for one of the equation in terms of the other equation. So we're going to take the top equation. First of all, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we can write that 3t1 is equal to 3 minus 2, which is 1, plus 4t2. And you know what? That's kind of going to be messy, isn't it? I have a better idea. What I'm going to do instead is come up with a better idea. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 2 and add the two equations together. I think that might be a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by a negative 2. If I do that, the top equation remains unchanged. I get 2 plus 3t1 is equal to 3 plus 4t2. And the bottom equation now becomes minus 6 minus 2t1 is equal to minus 8 and minus 4t2. And notice when I now add the two equations together, the t2s will cancel out, and I end up with an equation with just one of the unknowns. So 2 minus 6, that would be uh, minus 4. 3 minus 2 is a plus t1 is equal to 3 minus 8 is a minus 5, and those cancel out. Moving the minus 4 across, I get t1 is equal to minus 5 plus 4, which is equal to negative 1. So in other words, t1 is equal to negative 1, is a ne necessary condition. Now, let's go ahead and see what t2 will be equal to in that case. So I'm going to take, uh, the let's say, I'm going to take this equation right here, plug in negative 1 for t1 to see what the corresponding t2 is. So let's do that. So let's move over here. And we end up with 3 plus t1 is equal to 4 plus 2t2. And I'm going to substitute a negative 1 in for t1. So 3 minus 1 is equal to 4 plus 2t2. Bringing the 4 across, I get 3 minus 1 minus 4 is equal to 2t2. 3 minus 5, that would be minus 2 equals 2t2. Or t2 is equal to negative 1. All right. So now we've established for the two lines to be able to cross, t1 must be negative 1 and t2 must be negative 1. And we found that by setting the bottom two equations equal to each other. Now that condition has to also satisfy this equation and this equation. So now let's go for equation number 2. And we'll plug in negative 1 and negative 1 for t1 and t2 to see if those two equations are equal to each other. So over here we end up with 2 plus 3 times negative 1 must equal 3 plus 4 times negative 1. So we have negative 3 plus 2, that's negative 1, equals negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. 
That is correct. So therefore, that equation is satisfied. Now finally, we need to satisfy equation number three. Remember, oh, not number three. This is number one. Remember that this came out the third equation. So now we go to equation number one and we write 2 plus a negative 1 must equal 2 plus a negative 1 and of course that's equal to one another as well so therefore t equal, t2 equals negative 1 and t1 equals negative 1 satisfy all three equations which means that when the parametric variables t1 and t2 are set to negative 1 if they're set to the same value the two lines will be at the same location therefore they will cross they cross now let's find out where they cross. Well, the values for x, y, and z can be found by x is equal to 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. y can be found by saying 2 plus 3 times negative 1, so that's 2 minus 1, that would be minus 1, and z is equal to 3 plus a negative 1, which is equal to 2, that means that they will cross at the point 1, negative 1, and 2. And that's the location where the two lines will cross one another. So, first of all, you determine that they cross by saying that the parametric variable will have some value for line 1 and some different value for line 2. So you assume that initially they'll have different values. Then you set the three equations equal to each other. You end up with three equations and two unknowns. You take two of the equations and solve for the two unknowns. We found t1 equals negative 1 and t2 equals negative 1 using the third equation. Then those two values must make the other two equations equal to each other. And if they do, they cross. If they don't, they don't cross. If they do cross, the, na the last thing you need to do is, well, where did they cross? Then plug in the value for t1 or for t2 and solve for x, y, and z and find the coordinate points of the point where the two lines cross. And that's how it's done.